Consider the reaction that we have with tert butyl chloride reacting with iodide dissolved in water but at different temperatures. In the top example, we're reacting it at a low temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, and in the bottom example, at a higher temperature at 95 degrees Celsius. What's going to be the major product for this reaction, and what mechanism will it proceed by? Now, in both cases, we're dealing with a tertiary alkyl halide. So we're not going to get the SN2 reaction. The substrate is too sterically hindered for that. Now, we don't have a strong base. Iodide is a good nucleophile, very, very, very weak base. Water is a better base than iodide. So water will be the weak base. Iodide is the good nucleophile. Because we don't have a strong base, we're not going to get the E2 reaction. So what we're going to get is a mixture of the SN1 and E1 reaction. We have a tertiary alkyl halide, a decent nucleophile, and a weak base, which is the solvent. Now, what you need to understand is that as we increase the temperature, we're going to get more of the E1 reaction. So as the temperature goes up, the yield of the E1 reaction increases, the yield of the S1 reaction decreases. As we decrease the temperature, we get more of the S1 product and less of the E1 product. So high temperatures favor the E1 reaction, low temperatures favor the S1 reaction. So this is going to proceed via the S1 mechanism. The second example will proceed via the E1 mechanism. In both cases, in the first example, we're going to replace chloride with iodide. The water really doesn't need to react in this example. What it's going to do is going to solvate the carbocation but we will get chloride as a side product. So those are the products for the first reaction. In the second example, because we're getting elimination, we're going to form a double bond. Chloride will be expelled. And water is going to abstract a proton and we're going to get, you could think of it as iodide and H3O plus. But if you were to subtract water as a reactant and as a product, you can treat this as HI. If you take away water from H2O plus, it's basically H plus and I minus. But now with that being said, why does an increase in temperature favor the E1 reaction over the SN1 reaction? Why, does high, why do high temperatures favor elimination over substitution? Well, there's two big reasons. The first one has to do with thermodynamics. Perhaps you recall the equation delta G gives free energy is equal to delta H, the enthalpy, minus T delta S, the change in entropy. Now an increase in temperature enhances the entropy effect. If we look at the reactions for S1 and E1 that we have here, notice that for the S1 reaction we have two reactants and two products. So in terms of the number of molecules and ions that we have here, there's no net change. It's two for two. But for the E1 reaction, we have two reactants, three products. So there's an increase in entropy for the E1 reaction. As we increase the temperature, it's going to enhance the entropy effect because this term, T delta S, will increase as well the absolute value of T delta S will increase as temperature increases. Now we do have a negative sign in front of that. And so as this increases, it's going to cause delta G to decrease or become more negative. And we know that a negative delta G value indicates 
a spontaneous reaction. So in other words, increase in the temperature causes this reaction, the E1 reaction, to become more spontaneous. So this reaction becomes more energetically favorable when the temperature goes up. The position of equilibrium shifts to the right as we increase the temperature. It becomes more energetically favorable. Now let's talk about the kinetics or the speed of the reaction. At low temperature, the reaction is under kinetic control. The SM1 reaction will occur faster under low temperatures. At high temperatures, it's under thermodynamic control. The energetics favor the E1 reaction. Now the E1 reaction, it has a higher forward activation energy. And that's why at low temperatures, it doesn't proceed because there's a, a higher energy barrier that must be overcome. And so an increase of temperature will allow us to get over that higher energy barrier. But why is there a higher activation energy for the E1 reaction? This has to do with the number of bonds that must be broken in order to get the E1 reaction going. If we focus on the SM1 reaction mechanism, the only bond that we need to break is the carbon chlorine bond. That's the slow step. Now remember, anytime you break a bond, that's an endothermic reaction. You need to put in energy to do that. Whenever a bond is formed, energy is released. That's an exothermic reaction. So this step requires the input of energy. In the next example, where iodide combines with the carbocation, energy will be released. So in this mechanism, we only need to bake we, we only need to break one bond, that is the carbon chlorine bond. Now for the E1 reaction, we also need to break the carbon chlorine bond to get the carbocation. Now this step here is where it's get, it gets interesting because in the S1 reaction, we don't need to break another bond, but for the E1 reaction, we do. In order to get the E1 reaction going, we need to break another bond, that is the carbon-hydrogen bond, in order to form that alkene. So for this particular example, in the S1 reaction, we only need to break one bond. For the E1 reaction, we have to break two bonds. And so that requires a greater input of energy to do that. As a result, there's a higher energy barrier or a higher activation energy that we have to overcome to break those two bonds. So that's why the SM1 reaction is under kinetic control. It can occur faster at lower temperatures because we only need to break one bond. For the E1 reaction, we need to break two bonds, so we need more energy, and that extra energy is available at higher temperatures. So now let's review what we've learned. In summary, the reason why an increase in temperature favors the elimination reaction over the substitution reaction has to do with number one, thermodynamics. The elimination reaction is more energetically favorable due to an increase in entropy and an increase in temperature enhances the entropy effect, causing the reaction to become more spontaneous at higher temperatures. So that's one reason why an increase in temperature favors the elimination reaction is because the reaction becomes more spontaneous due to the entropy effect as we increase the temperature. The second reason has to do with kinetics. Elimination reactions have a higher activation energy than substitution reactions. And as this particular example demonstrated, we needed to break two bonds to get the elimination reaction going, as opposed to breaking one bond 
for the S1 reaction. And breaking two bonds requires a greater input in energy than breaking one bond. So bond breaking, that's an endothermic process. So those are the two main reasons why an increase in temperature favors elimination over substitution. The entropy effect, which makes the reaction more spontaneous at high temperatures, and the fact that elimination reactions have a higher activation energy due to the fact that we have to break more bonds in it. So that's it for this video. For those of you who want more example problems on SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, feel free to check the links in the description section below, especially if you want to take a practice test as well.